Hey guys, Maverick here, and I'm coming back to you with another video because there's something that I've been trying to figure out all over the internet. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of literature on it, and so I want to do a video and put one out there, and maybe it can help some other people out the way that it helped me. But first, gotta roll that intro. <laughs> So the issue that I'm talking about is actually going to be with the software Streamlabs OBS and it's not an issue per se, um, but it's actually something that was driving me crazy because I have recently started streaming and I've, it's been pretty good. It's been going really well. For anyone that's not familiar with it, this is Streamlabs OBS. It's a variation of OBS and OBS Studio. At the core, they're the same problem, but this program was actually written um, to be specialized for streaming, guys, um, and it's basically a piece of software it's free you can download it i'll put it in the link below um and my issue that i was having with it there's tons of setup tutorials on the internet on youtube google whatever but my issue was with the current standing version of 0.20.1 a lot of people are going to tell you to go ahead and use uh the hardware and then new if you're on an nvidia graphics card now i don't know what it's going to say if you're on an amd card guys i haven't used amd for a very long time um i actually am using dual 2080 ti's so in my case i can't really help you if you have any questions as far as um if you're using an amd card but what i can tell you is that if you're using an nvidia card and you do have this particular issue then i'm here to help you out when you use the nvenc encoder as they're going to tell you to use the new one what ends up happening is you 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 lose this option right here which is to be able to rescale your output all right now that's going to be important for a lot of you guys who want to record in one resolution and stream in another um, anyone who has been recording for a while knows that sometimes you're going to be uh outputting to a platform that 1080p is their max whether it's 30 fps 60 fps but 1080p is their max now mixer does allow 1440p and i am streaming on mixer however i don't think it's really necessary since the majority of streamers the biggest streamers are streaming in 1080p anyway no reason to hog up all that bandwidth you don't need to use as much bandwidth you don't need to set a high bit rate now my bit rate here guys for streaming at 1080p is 10,000, but that's because i love my streams to come out super smooth and my internet can handle it Usually anywhere from six to 8,000 is pretty good. I mean, I, I've seen guys who use that bit rate and doesn't really cause them any issues. But in my case, guys, since I'm able to do it, I do it just, you know, for that little bit extra. So when you do originally come to output, guys, you don't want to use the simple mode because that's just going to give you like a one catch all. You want to use it advanced so that it gives you these four tabs, which is streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. All right. Having said that, your streaming and your recording are going to have to be set up separately. So as you see here, I have all of my videos going out to GeForce Recordings, which is on my NAS. All right. And my bit rate for that is 30,000. But because that's not internet dependent, I can do that so that those can come out nice and crispy. And I can use those later on for social media, for YouTube, whatever, my highlight videos, whatever. You want to keep the same rate control CBR. It's a control bit rate at 30,000. All right. Keyframe, you can leave it zero. Preset, I use max quality. Again, guys in my system i'm blessed to have uh you know something that's a little bit higher end but if you do have like a mid-range computer you can set this to quality um performance that's when it starts uh sacrificing how good it looks for the performance of your pc so that's going to be really depending on who's watching this and what you have in your rig okay um my profile i use high and now this right here is really important guys this is another thing that i scoured around and didn't really find a lot of answers and I had to kind of tinker around with this myself if you have more than one graphics card in your system, even if they're running an SLI or Crossfire, if you're using AMD, I use GPU one, which essentially is GPU one and GPU zero. GPU zero is your first graphics card. GPU one is your second graphics card. Okay. Uh, max B frames, you can leave it to, it's always at two by default. I'm not even really sure what that does. Never looked it up and never needed to mess with it, but I use my second GPU um, to do the, the encoding, the rendering that way, the first GPU and the second GPU are working more in tandem as opposed to just the first one doing all the work. Um, I have run these tests. When you do everything on the on, and you leave this on zero, your first card is doing all the work. Your second card is just kind of sitting at 20, 30, 40% max. Um, and considering that some games don't even use the SLI support anyway, it's better to have your second card helping out as much as the first card does. One doing the physics and encoding, the other one doing the rendering. You're all good, okay? 
Um, so that's for my recording, for my streaming. I rescaled the output. You got to check this box, guys. Otherwise, it'll leave it at the default. If you have a higher resolution refresh rate than 1080p, you want to check this output and then choose whichever one you want to stream at. Leave your control bit rate, which is CBR, and then choose the bit rate that you want to use. Again, I use 10,000. I know recommended is 6 to 8,000. Um, but the lower, consider that the lower you go, the more pixelated your stream will come out. And having said that, you also have to consider what your internet too is, guys. You can get on your speed test. You can get on Google uh being whatever you want to use and run an internet speed test and it'll tell you from there how much you should use guys um having said that for streaming audio tracks i only need one um because down here i i add in the mixers anyway what i want to use for my go xlr which is the mic music voice chat system whatever that's another that's another video for another day um leave and for streaming service encoder settings leave that unchecked to rescale your output we already talked about my bit rate again that's for you minus ten thousand probably start a little lower and chip away a little higher if you don't like the quality of your streams guys preset is minus max quality profile is high i using my second gpu again um but that's it guys it, this but this right here is the most important part with the encoder that you're using in in this version at this very minute in streamlabs obs is going to dictate whether or not you can record and stream in a different resolution when i was using up until today I was using this one, which is a hardware NVENC new. I didn't have the option. When you use that, it just does not give you the option. It doesn't give you the option to rescale. So either you're doing your streaming and recording in one resolution or or it doesn't matter. Whatever resolution you have, that's the one that it's going to stream at regardless of you know what you pick. So I hope that this helped you guys. I was extremely happy to find this, tinkering around with it. I've been messing around with it. Um, and, and again, I, I didn't want to put any undue stress on you know hogging a bandwidth unnecessarily. So this is a really good option, guys. I know that a lot of people will tell you to use the new NVENC encoder. Unfortunately, in this version of Streamlabs OBS as it stands, it actually takes that option away from you to stream and record in a different resolution. Having said that, guys, I hope that this helps you out. I hope you have a splendid night. Be good, be safe, God bless, and peace.